Welcome to the Trading Bell. I'm Noki Kimboy. Now, when we talk about the bond market, what comes top of mind is government. What about the corporate bond market? How active has it been? Over the past two years, we've seen four listings, and that is not the best of our abilities. Question is, can we do better? Well, we've seen East Africa Brewers, our public limited company, coming out and issuing a bond, a corporate bond, which was oversubscribed by over 300%. What does this indicate? A huge appetite for the bond market. And you're about to have that conversation with the CEO and MD of EABL, Jen Karuku. Here's her profile, shall we? Mrs. Jit Karuku was appointed Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer EABL, effective 1st January 2021. Mrs. Karuku was the Managing Director of Kenya Breweries Limited, KBL, since July 2015 and a member of the EABL Board since 2013. She has overseen the strategic and operational transformation of the KBL business during her time at the helm of the largest manufacturing operations in East and Central Africa. Mrs. Karuku has been instrumental in implementing the KBL strategy that has helped the company to improve on its route to market efficiency, cost optimization, launch of strong innovation pipelines, talent development, and enhancing the company's reputation among its stakeholders. She has overseen the revival of KBL Kisumu Brewery and various capacity and operational improvements at the Nairobi plant. Welcome to the Trading Bell. Thank you, Noah. Quite interesting. You, I mean, five months and you're already back. No, we are back. Mm -hmm. We are back. I think, uh, have we ever been away? <laughs> <laughs> I think what we had, we had a challenging time and we had uh, a curveball, like we all did, called COVID-19. But I think we innovated, either as consumers or as a trade or as an organization. We innovated the way we work to make sure that we are not completely gone mm -hmm. because we believe that COVID will be one day over. And by the way, it's not over. Mm -hmm. But I think we've learned how to live with COVID, uh, keep delivering our great brands to our consumers mm -hmm. in different ways and in different places. Mm -hmm. We've also continued innovating in, from a brand perspective. So we have many new brands that have come up. So we have, for example, we are going through a gene revolution. Uh, whether it's tankery or your chrome gin or your gear base, mm -hmm. whatever is your choice. Mm -hmm. We also have new great beers like Hop House 13, yeah. and you see a lot more. Mm -hmm. We've also innovated in, in terms of how we work ourselves because I think we need to be flexible and, and be adaptable. Because at the end of the day, we believed when COVID stru struck that we have to do certain things so we can emerge stronger. Mm. And one of it is continued investments. Yeah, definitely. And of course, if you need investments, you either can generate that from your internal organization or you can borrow, you can have a hybrid of all sorts. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I mean, corporate bond yeah. in Kenya and in our market is, has not been that active. Uh, but looking at you coming back to back, there's mm. a level of confidence uh, into, into this space that you're operating mm. in, mm. which is not common mm. uh, in, in the corporate world in Kenya. What is building that confidence and is it something that we'll see more of uh, in the coming days? I think that's a great question. But remember, EABL has been here for a very long time. We've been here for the last 100 years. In fact, we are just starting our centenary celebrations now as we speak. We've also been in the bond market at NSC severally. This is not the first time. Mm. So for us internally, it's, it's something that we like to do. And we, we find it right, the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I think the second thing is that there is available cash in this market. So whether it's an institution or whether it's an individual, if they have trust, A, in the company, for example, EABL, I think, consumers and, and the general ecosystem trust us as an organization, so they are willing to give us the money. Individuals as well, we've seen individuals in this latest subscription coming through, in fact they were the first ones off the block when we announced we were doing this about four weeks ago. So I think it's a, it's a meeting of minds, a great ecosystem where NSC is trying to get the vibrancy back into the country, mm. where CMA is working on the requisite and right regulatory space mm. for companies or individuals like us to play, and then the hunger for the cash. 
for companies like us because we have plans where we need more cash mm. which we can pay over time Definitely. or long term borrowing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that is quite interesting looking at this particular, you know, uptake of this particular product, mm. this particular knot, mm. where we have, uh, is it 32% uh, individual investors, the rest are institutional. Mm. And, and, and always there is that element of local versus foreign investment mm. and this push and talk about seeing more local investment mm. be it institutional or you know individuals mm. uh, i mean from your observation is there a change in landscape from the previous uh, note that you issued that you already retired compared mm. to this one yeah i think there is a small change i'll not call it a big change mm. there's a small change or mm. incremental change so we got 365 applications a combination of individuals, international investors, and local investors or in institutions. And I think 32% being retailers, that mm -hmm. was quite good. Mm -hmm. I think we probably would, would, would not have minded getting even 50%, but I think there's some work to be done, not necessarily by companies like us, but by the regulators, for example, either NSC or CMA, to encourage Kenyans or local people to start investing in these opportunities because they are great opportunities mm -hmm. that are coming through the, the stock exchange or through these processes, mm -hmm. including even the government bonds. Mm -hmm. But I think retailers are, are not yet there. We don't have enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, needs. There's a lot of room there mm -hmm. uh, for you know uh, individual uh, mm -hmm. retailers. Yeah. Uh, talking about these particular funds, you've speaking about the vision that you have as a company. I mean, a hundred years uh, is no easy feat. Very few companies in the country are a hundred and above. Mm. Um, this particular money that you're raising through this knot, mm. uh, what is it for? What are the plans? Mm. So remember, mm. I told you that during COVID, we've been thinking about how we merge stronger mm. because we think that after COVID, if we have the right plans, when we are finally off COVID and we know how to live with it, there is so much to go for mm. from an opportunity or a consumer opportunity space. So some of that money we are going to use for CAPEX. Mm. During COVID, we've been investing in production capacity in Dar es Salaam, Kampala, and, and Nairobi. Mm. We've also been investing in green energy because we want to make sure that we, have, we are a sustainable company and organization for the next 100 years, particularly around the, the climate. You know, this week is, is climate week globally. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing we are going to do is also just restructure our balance sheet for posterity or so that it can look better or, or get better ratios. So, but in general, it's really to use that money internally mm -hmm. to fund our own operations mm -hmm. so that we can continue growing and delivering strong growth for shareholders. Oh. Yeah. And uh, you've mentioned something that is very critical and of which investors are very keen on these mm. days. Mm. Uh, looking at, you know, uh, investments, where they put their money, uh, is it promoting sustainability, uh, which is quite critical. And one of the uh, reforms that you're seeing uh, with your company is in regards to, to power you are moving big time solar. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so in t just before COVID, I think in 2019, we actually said publicly, we were investing 27 billion shillings on sustainability, and that included water replenishment, reuse, recycle. We talked about uh, boiler energy. We wanted to replace our HO4, so we are replacing our HO4 boilers with biomass. Mm -hmm. We also talked about uh, light, or energy, I think, which is what you're probably referring to. Mm -hmm. So turning our, our, our offices and plants in solar driven, um, where, where we use uh, power generated from other sources. Mm -hmm. So it's an agenda we've had because we have an ambitious 2030 society goals. Because, for example, this business has been running for the last 100 years. We are trying to set up a great platform for this business to be sustainable in the next 100 for 100 years for the generations to come. And one has to be, how are we taking care of the environment in the place, places or in the, or where our operations are? Mm -hmm. And that's why we are making that investment. So to your question, which has been in the news for, uh, about not using less power, mm -hmm. it is in our strategic plan. 
and we started this journey way back in 2019. Mm -hmm. And we are pioneering, we are pioneering in this space. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the other thing I would say in terms of 20, so 2030 society goals, we are one of the companies that are driving 13 out of the 17 SDGs. Mm -hmm. So we are quite serious about climate action as an organization. Definitely. Yeah. You've mentioned COVID-19 was a curveball. Yes. And uh, for a moment, I want us to examine this curveball because, you know, in curveballs, there are lessons mm -hmm. in terms of trajectory, how they come, how you can evade them. Yeah. Um, during this pandemic period, uh, you know, in the manufacturing industry, in the beverage industry, to be specific, it was really hit. Explain to me the, how, how you are impacted as a company and also, you know, give me the dynamics within the different markets that you're in. Was there a difference between the Kenyan market and the Ugandan market and the Tanzanian market? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think another great question. So, so we are in three countries mm -hmm. or five countries, but I want to talk about the major ones. We are in Tanzania, Uganda and Kenya, of course. And of course, we operate, not operate, we export into Rwanda and Burundi mm -hmm. and, and Southern Sudan. So if I start south, so Tanzania really didn't um, treat COVID like the rest of the market. So our business was as usual, it was BAU mm -hmm. in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And we continued growing in strength and that business uh, continues to be strong. Now, Uganda and Kenya and Rwanda had similar effects. I think, uh, remember back in the day, we were all scared about COVID, so our industry was most hurt. Bars were shut. So at some point, we had to shut our manufacturing facilities and not just go home. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the more important thing is the lessons. I think the lessons were, we were quick on the block to just cut unnecessary or discretionary cost. Mm -hmm. So we survived. And I can tell you, Noah, we've never fired anybody during this process. And that's what we took up as, as, uh, as a determination, or we are determined not to send anybody home. So we cut costs so we can survive. And then the more important thing that we, do, we did was to be innovat innovative. Mm -hmm. Because we realized, even if you can't go to your favorite bar or a restaurant, you probably need to celebrate life somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we internally, well, we had started the agenda of how would we improve on our distribution should something like that happen. Mm -hmm. So we got very quickly into e-commerce. We know in Kenya and Uganda, everybody has a border mm. number. Yes. <laughs> so what we did, we got outlets and distributors which can deliver mm -hmm. or can avail stocks to a border, border guy. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is that we, we just, I, I think from working from home, we all went home. We all got uh, an, tech enabled to work out of home because our offices have been closed. They're just starting to start now. Mm -hmm. So we've also learned how to work from home. But I think the biggest lesson for me was Everybody is resilient. The organization was resilient, but the employees were even more resilient that you could work out of home, mm -hmm. be able to collaborate with each other and be able to deliver results and products to the consumer and to any other shareholder mm -hmm. or stakeholder. For example, farmers. Remember, we have a lot of farmers, but we're still able to get produce from them and store it. Mm -hmm. And now we are using it. So mm -hmm. I think it's resilience. Yes. Change, change, change. Be adaptable. Mm -hmm. Keep talking. Mm -hmm. And then protect each other's health. So we had a lot of communication within us in terms of how we keep each other sane mm. during this process. Yeah. Whether it's saying, uh, trying to, quote unquote, be safe from COVID, because mm. that was really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but also other things that are starting to affect uh, people in general, the population, mental health, mm. because you're alone. So we had a lot of conversations between us and from experts on how we could protect ourselves yeah. or keep ourselves healthy. Talking about resilience, I don't know how we can term the 20th of October when the curfew was finally lifted and people in the hospitality industry at large, they were very happy. That was that final injection that we needed in mm. the recovery of the mm. sector. Mm. I know it's been 11 days, not more than a month now mm -hmm. we are talking. Mm -hmm. But uh, what are the expectations now with the lifting of the curfew mm -hmm. and uh, you know, people now being able mm -hmm. to keep COVID rules, but the, the element of time, at least it's more flexible. What are you expecting with that? Yeah, so, so I think the hospitality sector was really, really hard mm -hmm. by COVID. I think we all know that. I think the opening of the, or the curfew, the, the stopping of the curfew, I think that was great. And mostly for the emotional reasons for a lot of 
other adjacencies, you know, in terms of, uh, if you think about where restaurants or bars are, there's so many other businesses that are supported by that trade. Mm -hmm. So if you think about, our, we call it gra uh, grain to glass, mm -hmm. that ecosystem from a farmer to the lady who sells you your nice drink, it it's hires a lot of people. So I think the, the feeling that now we are back is very good and very positive for the country. Mm -hmm. um, so what I expect is not just for us, I think we may push more bottles out of the door, but I think the economy at large will start recovering mm -hmm. because of all the associated activities that go along that chain. Mm -hmm. uh, and the number of employees that are hired by that sector are huge. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are very, very, very many. So, so I think what I expect, I expect uh, better business. Mm -hmm. I expect um, more positivity from a consumer perspective. They, they get more positive in terms of I can go out and get out of my house. Mm -hmm. I think from COVID is still a risk, so therefore all consumers and everyone needs to be careful. Mm -hmm. But remember about, um, I think about 12 months ago, we had this uh, fund we called out. It's $5 million to help outlets recover and the, they recover. And the recovery is around how we're investing on giving them uh, training capability as well as assets to make a seat better, mm -hmm. meet the one and a half rule, meet a rule. Yeah. And, and so we've invested with our partners who have outdoor spaces. Mm -hmm. So look out for some. They're quite safe to go and enjoy yourself. But at the end of the day, the, it's personal responsibility. Safety is personal responsibility. Definitely. Yeah, at the end of the day. Uh, All right. Yeah. And as we close up this conversation, mm -hmm. um, you know, we understand in the corporate world and uh, in the world that we live in right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. uh, gender parity is a critical uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. In the Kenyan ecosystem, African ecosystem, when you talk about gender parity in the corporate world, uh, it's a little bit skewed and for many reasons, historical and whatnot. So far where we are, are with leaders like you leading EABL, you know, very, very powerful ladies leading organizations. Are we seeing change in the area of gender parity, uh, especially lo looking at policy uh, initiatives to, to push for this issue? Mm. The answer is yes. I think we've made a lot of change. Mm -hmm basically from where we came from. Is it enough? It's not enough, certainly. And we have uh, a very long way to go. Uh, but I think if you look at, uh, first of all, let me start, start at ecosystem country level, it's changing. Mm -hmm. And you can see there's a lot of conversations about gender rules. And I think that's very healthy because I think we are all conscious. At corporate level, it's probably better than any other place because I think people are conscious and they are deliberate. At EABL, Certainly, we are very deliberate about it. So we have an ambition to be 50-50 in the next three years by year 2025. All right. So we are right now about 30. So we are working very hard. At board level, we are, we are way ahead. We are 42% mm -hmm. in senior management. So there we've done well. Yes. Uh, I think what we are trying to do internally is to have the right policies, first of all. And we are pioneering. We are finding we are pioneering in this space. So, for example, I think about eight. 12 months ago, we were the first ones to declare a six-month maternity leave and everybody got shocked, including a, a one-month paternity leave and guys didn't know what to do with it. But uh, mm -hmm. we're trying to, be, to pioneer <laughs> <laughs> in this space and, yeah. and, and, and get uh, mm -hmm. mothers or indeed fathers to, mm -hmm. to enable them to parent better when they get a young one. Mm -hmm. I think then the other thing we've done is to be very deliberate about leadership. So if you're a leadership in our organization, you get training and capability on how to stop being gender biased because sometimes people do it unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So we call it training on unconscious bias mm -hmm. because we are trying to get as many, um, shall I say, champions of this agenda and they don't have to be women. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's even better when the male, our male counterparts mm -hmm. uh, are, the, are the champions. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing we're also trying to do is to get policies in place like at interview, how you represented at interview so we've defined representation guidelines when you're interviewing for a role. Mm. And then just training and making sure that even those who are internally and you're women, you're as capable and as competent as anybody else. So we'll give you requisite training to yeah. be at par. Mm. And then lastly is recruitment, catchment. Mm. So we know that, for example, our industry is seen to be very male in, in nature. So we're going to uh, colleges or universities, hiring commercial interns 
or li ladies who are leaving university, then they come into the organization as graduate trainees. And we are skewing that towards women and in STEM programs, so engineering, commercial, and we've spread across the rest of the organization, uh, across, of, across the other functions, mm. to make sure that we have enough Definitely. coming in. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's very critical. I yeah. mean, you know, some of these uh, issues, yeah. global issues, if we don't take mm. you know, intentional efforts mm. and policy tweaks yeah. within organizations. Mm. And one last yeah. thing, sorry, mm -hmm. what we've done is call it out as a strategy. Yes. Right from our global company, Diageo, our CEO is a great champion for IND, inclus mm -hmm. <laughs> inclusivity and diversity. Mm -hmm. So, and then we call it out in the strategy or, T or TABL is also called out. We have certain, we must deliver it. So I think the most important thing is to be deliberate and call out clear objectives on how to, to deal with it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much. Yeah. This has been quite an edifying conversation. Yeah. And uh, hopefully by the year 2025, we'll be back here uh, to look at the 50-50 balance. Thank uh, you. In regards to gender <laughs> parity. But yeah. thank you very much, Jen yeah. Karuku, yeah. UBL uh, Group MD and CEO. Talking yeah. about uh, their medium-term note, uh, the corporate bonds market, but also other emerging issues. What are the expectations in Kenya? the lifting of the curfew, the expected growth, at the same time also taking an, you know, clear and policy directives to make sure that there is gender parity in the company. With that said, let's take a look at the markets, shall we?